See, it seems to me the fundamental question that we are going to be asked now is who pays? It can become a cliche, but that's what we're being asked. Who pays for the crisis? And that's the discussion about Greece. That's what you, you see today with the, the announcement of the huge cuts packages in Italy, Denmark, Spain, and the rest of them. Right across the world, ordinary people are being asked who pays? And it's such an enormous question that see, sometimes it seems so big you can't tackle it. And yesterday I was looking, I've got a five-year-old son, Sean, and I was looking what the crisis meant to Sean and what the condemned government is announced in the Queen's speech. A couple of little things. My boy has just been robbed. He's been robbed of £250 that he's supposed to get when he's seven years old. He goes to a state school, but it's an outstanding school. That's a problem now, because 2,000 outstanding schools are being about to be given to profiteers in the shape of academies. If he gets lucky and he gets through school, don't make any plans for Sean's future university career, because if other people have said they're already cutting student numbers, and we all know that tuition fees are about to go through the roof. This is, you know, I begin to feel I'm being personally attacked. My, my partner is a public sector worker. We find out that 50,000 public sector workers are likely to go this year. But I know that, 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 that Cameron is not just getting at me. I know that's true. He's not just getting at me, because some of the little gems in the Queen's speech include, for example, the, the, the sell-off of Royal Mail. Where, so, so therefore, postal workers, there'll be an assault on the, on, the, on the paying conditions of postal workers, but also the services that we rely on. And just one other little thing is worth going back through, the cap on non-EU migrants. What we're going to get here is the reason for these problems, the reason for the attacks. They're not the bankers, they're not the wealthy. Actually, it's migrants, it's Muslims, it's a whole pile of crap that we heard throughout the election period. And when we buried the BNP, it was important to say that we buried the BNP, but they will be back and the same arguments will come from the Tory front bench. And we have to realise that this is going to be a fact of life over the next period. When you go through the numbers of the bailouts, it staggers anybody. The 500 billion pound, 500 billion euro bailout and stuff for Greece, 250 billion the IMF is being asked to put up as a loan facility, right? The Greek debt crisis and what's happening in Spain, Italy and the rest of it is sending shockwaves across the world. Now, you see, some people can argue that attacks like that won't happen here. Somebody mentioned Romania earlier on. If they get away with a pay freeze over four years, which is what they're talking about in the public sector, they're asking to make the same kind of attack on ordinary workers' wages as they're asking to make in Romania. Now, Greece itself, lots of people here can speak up much better than me. I'd say one thing about the 5th of May uh, general strike. It seems to me the, the nature of the struggle has gone up a huge notch, but it seems to me now that even the 24-hour general strikes will not be enough to deal with a crisis. And when you talk about the fact that power workers could well be coming out in Greece, a question not just about who pays, but who's prepared to put up with it and who rules may at some stage be raised in, in, in Greece as well. And just a couple of things I wanted to say to, to, to finish, really. Now, the, the, fir the, fir the first thing is about here, because we can say that, you know, we, the, the, could these kind of struggles and, and protests whatever happen here? You can't just use a small picture of what's happening now. The volatility that exists economically can mean that these explosions can happen here just too easily. And there are basic lessons from Greece. One is unity. The idea that across the public sector, across the private sector, pensioners, students fight together. And we've seen small examples of this. The 5th of May was enormous in Greece, but a beautiful thing happened in London on that day when, a, when, a, when, a, when, when, when thousands of university lecturers and students protested, occupied and, and, and marched together in central London. That's an example about how you do things. The, the, the speaker from Bassa. The struggle at BA is now absolutely central. They are union busters and they are trying to use that dispute to break our movement and break our resistance at a time when the cuts go through. Every one of us, it seems to me, has a duty to raise this issue in our colleges, at work, try to collect money and try to hit back, 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 hit it back against these, uh, the, the, these, these arguments. We also have to learn that we've got to go across the traditional boundaries. This is not just about a trade union struggle. Whether we see that in Greece, but actually look at North London, we're in the Witten and a hospital campaign that saved the a &E. It was the community, it was pensioners, it was all trade unions alongside those people coming together. We have to learn these basic levels. And one fundamental, one fundamental thing we can do in solidarity with the Greek workers is we can fight ourselves. That has to be the central message out. Well, we can look to what they're doing, but if we don't fight ourselves, we are doing nothing for those people. We have to open a second front in this country. I want to see a little, just a, a little couple of little things about, about right to work itself. 
At the weekend, some 6,700 activists, trade unionists and campaigners came together at the Right to Work conference. This went from people like John McDonnell and, and Jeremy Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn, Adrian Ramsey from the Green, from the Green Party, a whole number of, of activists, and obviously um, Tiana Andrew, who's, who's a leading activist, ca came across from Greece. The conference itself came out with a whole sway of, 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 of commitments, but there were three basic things that it argued for. Firstly, was solidarity with Greece. Someone raised twinning, right, and stuff with Greek workplaces. Actually, that was one of the central arguments that came up about twinning British and Greek workers and, and workplace and trade unions. To get a delegation to go across to Greece, to keep the fight to get Greek workers to come to this country to put their, ca their, their case across. Secondly, it seems to me that the 22nd of June has to be a day of struggle right across the country. I'm all for demonstrations in central London. They're magnificent things and we need them. But we also have to get to a stage where every community, every workplace does something on that day. Even if it's something small in some ways. I mean, I've just got a, a text from a friend of mine in Sheffield. He said there's now a situation with the local Labour Party, the Green Party, new Sheffield Labour councillors and eight trade unions along with the student unions are agreeing to put a demonstration on the middle of Sheffield that day and if we can do that around the country then we are really beginning to build resistance. One other little thing, the Tory party conference on the 3rd of October is in Birmingham. It's not at the seaside, it's in Birmingham. I'd like to put an invite to everybody in the room to come to sunny Birmingham on the 3rd of October and actually you know if you look, just one look at one look at Cameron is enough to make you want to do it. But just to finish now is this really what Right to Work is about is about trying to pull together networks of resistance. Labour Party members, socialists, trade unionists, environmentalists, campaigners coming together. Because we're going to have to do two things here, it seems to me. One is we have to build networks of resistance. Secondly, we have to put arguments against their side, which is taking up the arguments. Where would the money come from? What about the tax avoidance? What about Trident? What about all those kind of things? But the other thing is we do have to argue for an alternative. I'm sorry, some people say it's an old-fashioned word. Social Socialism is what they used to call it. I like the word socialism. We have to start arguing for socialism because we have to have an alternative to this brutal system. And the struggles that are happening in Greece at the minute have given us an example of what that new society could look like.